The Bible is the mark of the beast. Now, today is God's plan. Listen close and you'll understand why you're on earth. When God put Adam in the garden and told him to not eat of the tree of knowledge, God knew what he was going to do. He knew, he knew what everything. He, he's ahead of us a hundred trillion times in intelligence. He knows what we're going to do. Now think this one thought. What did Adam choose? He chose the flesh. And it separated him from God. Why was Job tested? Because it, Satan told God to take what he has and he'll curse, curse you. And Job was tested. Why was Abraham tested with Isaac? And uh, Jesus was tempted. He said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. And that's the way life is. Now think about this. Say if you're a spirit and you're living with God, and God wants to know if you're going to love him more than anything, he'll put you on earth and put you in a body. And when he puts you in a body, he asked Peter, said, Peter, do you love me more than these? You learn what you love. Now think about this. Everybody preaches their own funeral. You ever been to a funeral? You think of that person. That person worked all their life to make them some money, to have them a, a, a big house, most women spend most of their life looking in the mirror, trying to straighten up their face. Well, that person ain't going to go to God. You know, I never have seen a person buried that they said that person spent most of their time in prayer and fasting. They just don't do it today. Satan has this world set up for the flesh. It's all for the flesh. And so that's what the problem is here on the earth. God's plan was to put us down here and subject us in hope to see if we live our spirit. Now listen to what I'm going to tell you right now. And this is very, very important. If you can't live with the Holy Ghost here, you can't live with God. You understand? That's what he's doing. That's exactly God's plan. Now think about that. You know why people want this? Because they can make it say they say what it want, they want it to say. They can be a Mormon or Jehovah's Witness, a Catholic, a Baptist, a Pentecostal. You can be anything with this. But with the Holy Ghost, you can only be godly. You can only be a Christian with the Holy Ghost. And that's why he sent the Holy Ghost. Because if you can't live with the Holy Ghost here, you can't live with God in the new world. Now, think about this. But you are come to the, uh, unto Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. That's where you're headed. The heavenly Jerusalem and an innumerable company of angels. Now, this is what God has planned all the time. See, he has a, a new world for us. But all the spirits that's there has been tried to see if they love God the most. See, he sent Jesus down from above. What did Jesus do? Jesus obeyed the Father. Now think about this. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all. You see in Hebrews. And then see what it says. It said, and to the spirits of and to the spirits of just men made perfect. How was they made perfect? They come and they lived in the flesh. They loved God more than they loved the flesh. They loved him more than they loved uh, sucking cigarettes, drinking beer, and sitting down at the bar, and going to church one hour a day a week, and living after the flesh. They live for money. They live for houses and lands and all. That's all they live for today. They don't live for God. You see... If you don't go pray every day, you don't want to spend time with God. If you don't spend, if you don't spend half of your time fasting, praying, seeking God, thinking about God and studying and doing God's will, then you're not going to be in the city of the living God. See, this is the city of the living God. That's where we're headed. And remember this. This will not get you there. Only the Holy Ghost can guide you. If you can't be guided by the Holy Ghost, if you can't be led by the Spirit, if you resist the Spirit, quench the Spirit, you cannot live with God. That's just that simple. That's God's plan. God outthinks us 10 trillion to 1. He put us down there in Adam, and Adam didn't have nowhere to go after he sinned but to Lucifer. All right. God let all these spirits be tried. He tries every son he ever sees. And the only thing he's doing is seeing if you love him more than you love the flesh. See, this is another life. You can go and live for money. Money is the root of all evil. And you live a whole lot. I've been to a lot of... He used to send me to funerals. He, he sent me to watch people die to teach me. 
said, watch a, 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 a Bible worshiper die. A Bible worshiper trusts in the flesh. They'll always call on the devil to save them. Uh, uh, when, when you're at a funeral of a person and you preach your own funeral, every, every funeral I've been talking care if it's your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your grandma, grandpa, they, they lived after the flesh. They lived their whole life after that. Oh, this was a great engineer. He done this. He made a lot of money. Had a big house. That, look at all the people in Arlington Cemetery. What did they live for? Most of them killed people. They got medals of honor. They killed a lot of people. They made them heroes in this world. Audie Murphy was one of the, one of the greatest uh, decorated men in the Second World War. And he killed around 100 people up there on a tank with a machine gun. And he was a hero because he killed all them people. And you see, this is the way people think today. They think in the flesh. We're going to build a big church with stained glass windows. Well, that's flesh. You need to be out praying. The way God designed it, he poured the Holy Ghost out upon them. And the apostle went forth. They'd lay hands on people. The Holy Ghost would come up on them. They'd have them little groups of people. And they'd live separate from the world. Today, you can't hardly even live separate from the world. So it's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's how simple it is. It's just that simple. So simple. See, if you weigh about 400 pounds and all you want is your belly is your God, or if you're pulling one arm bandits all the time, and you're gambling, or you're out making money, you've got to work some extra hours to make you some money to fulfill the lust of your flesh, then you are not going to be with God. You will not be with the spiritual God. A spiritual person prays all the time. They love God all the time. Their treasures are not on earth. Their heart is with God. It's a simple test here on earth. This is God's plan. He takes all the spirits that he thinks won't trust him on the other side of him, angel. He'll put them in a body. Send them down here. And you may see, you wonder why some people serve God so easy because they come from above. You see, I've been serving God all my life. I've loved him since I was little. He must have sent my spirit down here to see if I'd obey him. Well, he gave me this message. The Bible's an idol. Now, what does that do to me? When I tore up a Bible in Shreveport in 1970, everybody hated me. I didn't care. Because God said it was an idol and I'm on God's side. And I tell you that it's a mark of the beast and it's a uh, idol because I love God. I love him the most. I love him more than I love the flesh. I spend my time praying. I, I've been in the last six years just praying and fasting and telling people about Jesus. That's all. See, that's my life. My treasures are not in uh, above. If you love God, he'll give you your portion. You won't be a slave to this world and you can live a, a separate life and just live for God. It's hard to do in this world today because it's so much flesh. There's bar rooms on every corner. There's all kind of carnivals going on. Disneyland's and Reno's and Las Vegas's and Atlantic cities. You just got all kinds of sin cities and you can fulfill the lust of your flesh so easy. You got friends that wants to party. I mean, they want to revel all the time. So it's hard to live in the spirit and not act the flesh. But you're buried, you're baptized with Jesus Christ. You're buried into his death. We're supposed to be dead to sin. Now, when your life is over, remember what I'm telling you. If you live most, if I had a, a, a list of your life today, I, I just for 24 hours, and I said, well, for 24 hours, you, you went out and eat, you went to a movie, you worked eight hours, you slept eight hours, and you spent no time for God. And pretty soon this side of the page is going to be all flesh. This side on the spirit side, there ain't nothing there but zeros. You will not go to heaven. You will not be in the city of the living God. Because God's testing you right now. He tries everybody that you see, whether you live after the flesh. He told Jap to take your daughter and sacrifice her. What did Jap to do? He sacrificed her because that was God. He obeyed God. Unless you hate your mother, hate your father, your sisters, your brothers, your wife, your children, you will not serve God. You must hate this flesh. You don't live after the flesh. That's what God did. He designed it that way. That's his plan. This is God's plan to put you in the flesh, to see if you live after the flesh or after the spirit. It's just that simple, children. You live after the flesh, and you know it. You go around wanting uh, money, and you spend most of your time buying your clothes, going shopping, having fun. That's flesh, and you'll not make the new city. You will not be the spirits of just men made perfect. What made them perfect? They come down and lived in the, in the flesh, they did not live after the flesh. They didn't want the flesh. They gave up the flesh. And Jesus gave up his life. He come down, 
showed us the way, I'm the way. And when he died, what did he have? He had his robe and a pair of sandals. That's all he had. Didn't have no treasures on her. Had to even ask John to take care of his mama. Didn't have no house or nothing. So John took care of his mama. So you see, it's flesh or spirit. That's God's plan. Remember, God's plan. Either live after the flesh, live after, and all you Bible people that's going down to the church, you think you can be guided by this, you, you'll not be accepted by God. You can make this be anything. You can be a snake handler out of this. You've got to let God in you and control you. That's God's plan. So remember God's plan for your life. Thank you, Father, for your great intelligence. Help us to live after the Spirit and not after the flesh. Well, I was bound to Satan, full of lust and hate. Jesus came and filled my heart with love. I came from the bottom. Peace and love, I got him. Spirit came up on me like a dove. I'm moving on up with my Jesus. I had to learn to walk till I could fly. I'm moving on up with my Jesus till I reach my home in the sky. Now, if you're in the dark, Jesus Christ could. He'll put you on the mountain. There's a living fountain.